listen to music, it might not be my personal preference, but I'll listen to it to get something out of it that, that I can learn. It's gonna teach me something, whether it be uh, how to play a, a certain lick or a feel or to feel something. And when something makes me feel something, it comes out of here, goes down, travels down the arms and goes to the instrument, you know? I would listen to what every single person was doing. Every musician, the keyboard, drums, guitar, because it, I wasn't trying to, oh, I can only listen to the bass because I'm a bass player. No, no, I was seeing, I play for the song, for the whole song. When it comes time to do a solo, man, do a solo. Do your solo, but when it comes time to play for the song, play for the song, don't be a self, self-indulgent asshole. Yeah, I see so many musicians, they go, I am so great, no matter what I play, it's fantastic. Get the fuck out of here. You play for the song, man. You know, if I if I was in a if I was playing a WAF song and, it, and it, like Wild Child, I was like, it's that, it's, that's all it is. Now, if we were, if I went, <laughs> it's not like shit. You played with the song, man. I got to see some fantastic concerts in the early 70s. You know, Led Zeppelin, Alice Cooper, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, you know, James Gang, Humble Pie, Montrose, the original Montrose, you know, Kiss on their first tour in 1974. At the KC Kite Flying Contest in St. Louis, Missouri, they were playing outside at this park. And there was a first album that just come out and they had their makeup, and they, but all they had was amplifiers and the drums and their makeup and jeans and t-shirts. And they played their first album and it was great. They really grooved, you know, and it was really, really cool. It was like, wow, this is a new, kind of a new thing. But they didn't have any of that stuff. And then they came back later that year in October and I saw them and they had the huge show and it was at the end of that, you know. <laughs> When I was in high school, back in the early 70s, I was listening to Beck Bogart and a Peace album, stuff like that, Jeff. And then in 1984, I get in a band with Carmine and Peace, King Cobra. Yeah, King Cobra, man. King Cobra. I lost. Yeah. So that blows my mind. So then in 86, we get a, we get a gig with the King Cobra's opening for Kiss on the Asylum tour. You know, so here's me. <laughs> And I go and I'm talking to him, hey, Paul, gee, man, I saw you guys 1974. I'm telling him this shit because I've always remained a fan, you know? <laughs> Everybody looked at me like, this guy's nuts. Didn't matter, though. You know, it was cool to me. Here I am, years later, you know, with him. When we came off that tour with King Cobra and Wasp and Ted Nugent, I was home for about two weeks and I got a phone call from drunk Chris. <laughs> Chris, drunk. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> anyway, this guy, a drunk guy on the phone, I didn't recognize who it was, so I didn't even answer it. I didn't call back. And a couple days later, he called back and he was sober or something. And I understood him, and so I called back and he said, Yeah. He said, Blackie is interested in talking to you about playing and blah, 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 blah. And right at that time, King Cobra was getting dropped by Capitol Records after our second album. So I went to the studio, Posture Studios in Hollywood, and went in to see Blackie. And he was sitting there, and we were talking in front of the control board. And they, they, he had started working on the Inside the Electric Circus album. He said, and we talked a little bit. And he said, hey, you know that, uh, you ever heard the song, I Don't Need No Doctor? And I said, I've been playing that since 1972, man. That's one of my favorite songs by Humble Pie. He goes, well, we're going to do it on this album. I go, really? He goes, yeah. He says, you want to try playing on it? I goes, you know what? I go, yeah, I know it. I said, you do it in the key of E, right? He said, yeah. I said, turn on, man. And this song came on. And I went. They played it a lot faster than the original, but I followed right along. You know, and I get to this one part, and they play the wrong chord. Then where it goes. It goes G, yeah, but they did F sharp. They went dun, 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 and it's actually dun, 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 dun. and I played the G like the song that I knew, and he didn't even notice that it was wrong, and they left it on the album. <laughs> Thank you.
I do a reunion. I do a reunion with Wasp, you know. If you got Chris and me, man, him uh, across the front, we could get Steve, Stett, Frank, whoever can play, man, you know. We're the guys and drummers, and it would be great. It's sad because I would love to do it. Because I, th I think we should do it because for the fans. Most of the fans want it. You know, the, it's the Blackie Lawless show now. It's not Wasp anymore. It's Blackie. It's not Wasp. Hey, Black, if you're listening, man, you know, let's do it again. What the hell? Let bygones be bygones, as they say, man. No, you know, man, we're all older now. It's like whatever issues we got, just let it go, man. You know, let's go out and rock the fucking world one more time. Because they want it and they, they love it, too. And you know we can do it. <laughs> we can go. I got pictures of naked ladies lying on the bed. I fuck like a pig. <laughs> that was, I, that's my favorite. Still to this day, that's my favorite song, man. Yeah, he got some bass tracks on there. Carmine used them. You know, I can't remember. I don't know. If, uh, Monsters and Heroes or something like that. A song we did. You know, about Ronnie James Dio. But, um,. I've been playing music for 50 years, you know, and I'm just so fortunate that I get paid for what I love to do, that I got paid for what I love to do, you know. I never, I don't forget where I come from, you know. It's in always in my mind. I never let that, let this shit go to my head. I just, I act crazy all the time because, because that's how I feel. I feel wild and crazy, you know, but I'm not stupid at all. But I act wild and crazy because it's more fun. No, they always think I'm high because of my energy and that, and I'm not, man. That's just, this is just me. You see me on drugs, you probably wouldn't see me. <laughs> Be a flash, be going boo! You think I'm fast now? You gotta see them. That name was given to me. Johnny Rao was given to me in 1978. It was six years before I ever even went to California, and I used it in when I was playing the local area, local St. Louis bands, bar, bars and stuff like that. People used to laugh at me and say, oh, ha, ha. Johnny Rod, oh, you're that right, so stupid, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, that's right, it's real stupid. And then one day in 1984, I was just gone. <laughs> and uh, that name was given to me by some girl one morning, after we, one morning after the evening. She made a joke about something and she said, called Johnny Rod, and I laughed. And I thought about it for a second, I said, that's a great stage name, man, Johnny Rod, because it rolls off. Johnny Rod. And I said, I'm going to start using that. So I told you the story about Rich Ford, it's a guitar player for Guns N' Roses. He lives in St. Louis, from St. Louis. I was working out with him at the, at, a, at the gym. I used to work out with him down there at the Gold Gym. And he, he said, you were a legend to me and my friends. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, man, when I was in high school, we used to hear about this guy around St. Louis named Johnny Rod, who was a maniac. He said he was a fucking crazy maniac. He used to jump up on the bar and run down the bar doing a baseball and kicking drinks in people's faces and flipping everybody off and going wild in these bars like a nut. He said, you, you know, we thought it was so cool, but we, we couldn't come and see you because we weren't old enough. And he said, but you were a legend to us. Like a, it just, it just, it's a cute story to me, man. And it makes me laugh because he was right. That's the shit I used to do. I was doing that shit before I ever went to California. 